So first off, I saw like a man and a woman. And, you know, um, I know a lot of you guys, we have all kinds of people watching uh, with, you know, different um, different gender roles and also uh, different identities. But for the sake of just explaining, you know, the messages that are coming through, I see this man and a woman and they're in a couple uh, relationship. So like they're in a serious relationship and the woman is walking ahead of the man. She's like making the decision. She is um, trying to move the relationship along in a very specific path. And I feel like for some of you, uh, this basically means that, you know, you're, you're following the lead or you yourself are taking the lead to move the direction, the, the relationship in a specific direction. So I see one partner wanting to nest, wanting to create that nest egg, wanting to move in together, wanting to um, move the relationship to the next level, uh, buying property, changing house, trying to figure out, um, you know, trying to figure out like, am I going to have to buy the house or are you on the same path with me? So I see plans being uh, thought about or, you know, coming into the picture, but one person is a lot more emotionally invested while the other person is like, no, let's wait. Let, let's, let's wait for things to settle. Let's wait for a little bit more certainty. Let's wait for a little bit more financial stability. So I, I see like this discord in the relationship for many of you. And you could be, you know, um, uh, you don't have to be in a heterosexual relationship. If you are in a relationship, I feel like the, the message still resounds in that there is a disconnect here between what one partner wants versus what the other partner wants. And a lot of it rests upon, you know, needing to have that secure financial base first before the other partner will um, jump the gun, before the, the other partner will start planning. So try to make sure you both are on the same page. Try to, if you're the one rushing, slow down a little bit to match your partner's rhythm. If you're the one that's too slow behind, try to catch up a little bit to match your partner's rhythm. So there is a little bit of internal tug of war and I feel like it, it, it can be mitigated if both partners kind of slow down and reassess what their partner needs and, you know, try to accommodate, okay? Um, I feel the energy for this month on the romantic front, like on the relationship, the romantic front, it deals heavily with uh, finding somebody that, uh, that you want to, you know, share your life with. Finding somebody that you're actually very compatible with. And I also see people, um, especially Virgo and men, regardless of, you know, whether or not you're dating men or, or, or women, if you're a Virgo and men, I feel like you might be interested in somebody. It's like admiring somebody from, from afar, um, liking somebody and doing a lot of cute little nice things for them. But the other person seems to me to be like, distracted with another relationship or they're distracted with somebody else or they kind of put you in a friend zone and so they're not really they see what you're doing but they're they're not really uh reciprocating so it's like unrequited love or it's like you're admiring them from afar and you don't know how to um approach them but i also feel the majority uh from for many of you who are in that situation where you're admiring somebody from afar it seems like they, they've got somebody else that they're seeing, that they're dating, that they're thinking about, okay? So make sure they are completely single before you jump the gun on that, okay? So I, I, I'm sensing that. So um, let's go into this reading here. And um, it's, it's very romance relationship oriented. And so let me talk about this because I, I find this very fascinating. So I believe... Okay, so this one is up here. Yeah. So here is two very interesting energies. Excuse me, I dropped the card. Okay, so we have here the King of Wands, and then we have here the Queen of Cups. So this is almost like what I was seeing earlier, the, the couple, okay? 
one person. This is a, a very public conscious type of a person. They care about status. They care about, you know, their reputation. They care about their achievements. They're very, very public uh, career oriented. And so the things that define this person is their ability to lead other people, their ability to garner respect, their ability to kind of like sit on their throne and, you know, um, dictate what other people need to do. So they don't have to lift, lift a finger. They have minions and other people that they're overseeing. They're overseeing their progress. They're overseeing their development. So there's a lot of responsibilities here um, on this person's shoulders. However, they gladly take on the responsibility because deep down they know that the responsibility comes with a commensurate you know, salary, commensurate compensation for their hard work. And so this person is still trying to build their career. They have a lot of things that they're looking at. They're still as well assessing, scoping the horizon to see, you know, what are the um, near future challenges that I'm going to have to face? What are the long-term challenges that I'm going to have to face, etc. So this person is not in that nesting stage just yet, okay? So for some of you, you might be dealing with a, uh, a fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo. Or you're just dealing with the embodiment of this person where they're not yet ready, not just yet, to settle down. They think about children, they think about family, and they think about, you know, trying to recreate that space or that environment. But I do feel like they're a little bit apprehensive. And then you have this person who's very, very childlike, uh, a little bit on the naive end, very emotional, okay? wants what they want and they want it now. So it's somebody who's a little bit more, I want to say impulsive, but it's like an emotional impulse. It's sort of like somebody who loves to take care of things, but they love to take care of things for the wrong reason. They love to feel wanted and needed and constantly um, um, being like the, the object of somebody's affection or, or you know, the uh, the world in somebody's eyes. So they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And when it's in the reverse, uh, we have here a water sign. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. And this is somebody as well that is, I feel they're telling you, I want this, I want that. And you're like, let's wait on it. Let's wait. It's not the time just yet. But they're not really taking no for an answer. And so if you're telling them no, they might guilt trip you into doing something or into, you know, succumbing to, to doing whatever it is that they want. So I feel this dynamics playing out in your relationship. I also feel this is like a family situation that you're dealing with for this month. Family member telling you, I want this, I want that. Can you deliver? And you're just like, Yes, but the timing is not right now. And Virgos, you guys are really, really good at telling people, um, you know, like, no, not right now. Or, you know, you, you, you're you very, very good at telling people whether or not the timing is right, okay? So what I'm feeling is somebody wants something from you. You're not at a point where you can deliver, but right now you're just like, I don't think the timing is right. I don't think it's uh, the, a wise thing to do right now. So can we put it on the back burner? Can we revisit this conversation at a later date? And the other person is taking it very personally. Rather than, than hearing what you're saying, which is yes, but not right now, they're hearing no, and they're shutting down, and they're taking it personally, and they feel like you're being mean. So... What do you do in this situation? One partner needs to slow down for the other, and the other partner needs to catch up in order for both people to be on the same page, okay? So what I see here is you've got a relationship, and this is like, um, this is a relationship that stands the test of time. When it's in the upright position, it's a very good card that basically means through thick and thin, we're going to be there together. 
And it's also a situation where the two of you have been through many, many, many challenges and hardships with each other. But, you know, you're, you're stronger because of it. You know what the other person is capable of. When it's in the reverse position, I feel for many of you, you're in a new relationship where you're not yet sure. You haven't been tested. You're not yet sure um, if, if it's the right person. Or you're not yet sure that the other person is... I, I'm sensing here somebody saying like frivolous. Somebody who, who's not realistic or somebody that, you know, you like them, you're attracted to them. But they haven't been through a, enough hardships or you haven't experienced enough hardships with them to really know what they're capable of, to really know who they are, to really understand their character. So there is a situation here where I feel like you're, you're, you're still trying to, you know, figure out like, are we actually right for each other? Are we even on the same page? This is a card about differences. Two people that are like different, like night and day. And there could be an element here of, you know, being culturally different from each other, ethnically different, ideologically very different from each other. In the past, you have always been able to, you know, make the differences work. But now in the month of May, it's like when the pressure is on, are you still able to move forward in the same rhythm or at the same pace? When one partner is emotionally distraught, is the other partner going to step up and, you know, carry the weight of the relationship? Or will the relationship kind of crumble? So I feel there are big elements here about, you know, needing to test your partner, uh, feeling like you're not really sure about the footing of this relationship. I have here uh, Cancerian and Sagittarian energies, okay? So when it comes to the Cancer person, I feel like, you know, they're, they're with you. They're with you 100% of the way. But you're a little bit apprehensive about their motives. You're a little bit apprehensive about whether or not they are the right person for you. For some of you, this can be a person that you like as well. If you're not in a relationship. You're trying to see if they're single. You're trying to see, and you know, you guys don't just like beeline it for your the object of your affection. You examine them very, very carefully before you offer your love. And I feel like for some of you, this is somebody that you're still trying to figure out. Do they have what it takes? Are they frivolous? Do they like me? And such. And, and so I feel like you're still trying to gauge things out. And then we have as well, the temperance card is the card of Sagittarius. We have a Sagittarian person that has been through a lot of um, hardships in their own lives. And I feel like this is somebody, it seems like they're still trying to figure things out from their end. But you like this person. And I feel like that Sagittarius Virgo uh, mix is actually very dynamic. And the Sagittarius person has a lot to learn from the Virgo in person. And I think also vice versa. But I, I almost feel like the Virgo in person would be the parent, you know, would, would play more of the authoritarian role in the relationship, even if it's a love relationship. And so are you okay with embodying, playing like the, the parent to a person who themselves is an adult? Are you okay with taking on that responsibility? Or, at this point, do you need more of an equal relationship partner? So I feel some of you as well are kind of looking at your past and looking at your past patterns in relationship and not just romantic relationship, family relationships as well. And you're trying to find like-minded people. You're trying to find people that you can just be yourself with without being a teacher to them without being a mentor to them without picking up their their weight because it can feel very very heavy it can feel as well very lopsided when we're constantly you know when one person is constantly playing the the role of the authoritarian figure 
or the teacher in a relationship and the other person is always the child. So I feel the dynamics here where you are examining your relationship and you're examining why am I repeating these patterns? Why am I telling them, you know, what they should and should not do all the time and why are they not listening? Why is there why am I the person that's constantly coming in to do some damage control in their lives when I already advise them on what they should do and they didn't listen. So I see a situation playing out where it's very relationship oriented, where other people need to learn their own life lessons. And, you know, you're trying to ease the process because you have that breadth of vision, you have hindsight, and you're just like, if you continue down this path five months from now, it's not going to be pretty. And so you try to intervene, right? You try to get in the way and tell them, I know you have free will, but if you don't make the right choice, here's what's going to happen. And then they have free will, so they're going to make the, the wrong choices anyways. And then you have to come in to do that damage control. And so it, it does get tiring, Virgos, to be constantly, you know, uh, fixing other people's problems. And I also feel like this is the month where you kind of need to relinquish control. You need to listen to your higher wisdom and your intuition. You can observe and look at a situation from afar. But ultimately, free will, you know, somebody's will, somebody's uh, motives and intentions and whatever actions they're taking to move themselves forward. It's free will. We can't really interfere with other people's free will, okay? So the way I look at it, the situation's out of your hands. So you kind of need to just enjoy the ride. And then for some of you, you're in that relationship where your partner is ahead of you and you're trying to catch up. Tell them to slow down, okay? Maybe you don't really need to frantically catch up they're not going to leave you. They're not going to leave you behind. They're not going to bounce around to another partner. But you have to communicate. You're moving too fast. I'm feeling nervous. Can you please slow down so that we can be on the same page? So that I can work with you on the same page. And this is also an energy spilling into the work sector. But because you're so expedient at work what you might have to do is to tell somebody I'm in the process of you know finishing this up so can I finish this up before you throw other work at me so I feel like this process about you needing to communicate a little bit more about what your needs are so that the other person understands you and um uh, it's a good thing to begin to, you know, communicate our needs and to put our needs first and to, you know, really uh, let other people know that you're giving me too many things, you're moving too fast, or um, I'm not really clear what you expect from me, okay? Um, on the career front, you guys have some amazing, amazing cards, okay? This is a, a really good card about karma, like good karma. The Six of Pentacles usually indicates like um, something that you've given out is being returned to you tenfold. So this is like, you know, helping other people at work and now you're in a jam, they're helping you. Or helping somebody and, you know, they're telling other people about you. They're kind of like um, spreading your name around in a very good way and then it opens up new opportunities for you. Getting a lot of recommendation, getting really positive performance reviews. And getting really, really positive uh, feedback based on the work that you're doing, okay? So I feel like in the work front, you, don't, you guys don't need to worry at all. And I also feel there's quite a bit of travel that's picking up for you on the work front. So I don't know if you're doing a lot of um, cross-country travel even, or if you're traveling around um, just a lot for work. I feel like you should be compensated as well, okay? So, you know, write down the odometers, write down um, 
try to document everything that you're doing so that you can get a adequately compensated, okay? So be very diligent about doing the bookkeeping, the housekeeping part of it so that you can get your, uh, your reimbursement, okay? Um, one other thing that I want to mention as well when it comes to, you know, the remainder of this reading, I feel like you're in a work environment where people are a little bit like, you know how some people, even when you communicate with them, they're, they're going to hear what they've already decided they're going to hear. So you might be telling them something totally, totally different, but in one ear, out the other, they're only going to hear what they've already decided they're going to hear. So I see a lot of frustration here on the work front where you're dealing with people who are coming in very emotionally distraught. They don't know how to solve problems. They can't really think clearly. They can't think straight. And they're looking to you to be the fixer for their problems. And they're not cooperative, nor are they at a point where emotionally they're able to tell a, a story or to you know provide a narrative in a coherent manner. So they're either emotionally very distraught and they can't really answer straightforward questions. So it's going to be very, very confusing. So you're going to be dealing with some opposition here between he said, she said, and then, you know, um, narrowing down a, a clear, logical narrative to a specific story. What exactly happened? How did it happen? To whom did it happen to? Because you're not getting a straight answer from this one person. I feel this is playing out in their uh, in the work environment, okay? So we have here water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Somebody that is a little bit distraught, you might be called upon to help this person out in some way to kind of sort out some things in their lives. Or the, the best thing to do is to detach yourself a little bit and try to remove yourself from the situation because they're leading you down a very, very confusing path. And they're not being very clear with their objectives. And I feel like they might be a little bit manipulative too. They want you to see a specific side to the story. And they might inadvertently spin the truth so that you're seeing a very biased version. So just be careful about that. Um, I see many of you thinking about property as well. Buying, selling possibly fixing up your property so that it can increase the value and then you want to sell it possibly in the June time frame to the August time frame. Um, I feel like the summer time frame, June, July, August, September, would be a really good time to sell. Okay, so consult your uh, realtor or, uh, you know, check, do your research when it comes to the property value and how much it fluctuates, but I feel like the summer time frame is a prime opportunity for you to do that. So if you can get all the repairs done, you know, try to push for the summer sale date, okay? Um, aside from that, I want to look a little bit into your love life. Okay, so Virgos, for those who are single, what I have here, Knight of Pentacles and Seven of Swords, okay? So the Knight of Pentacles, I feel like this is your energy, where you are offering your love and your affection to uh, another person. This can be an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra, and this is a person that is... Um, I feel I, the Seven of Swords, I don't feel like this is a negative card. I feel like this is a person who's a little bit uh, mischievous, who's a little bit like, uh, who, who does a lot of things to kind of poke fun at you in a joking manner. But this is a relationship where you're really, really, I feel like it's going to toughen you up to get into this relationship. So it's actually good for you. But it's going to require that you don't take things personally. It's going to require that you 
are a little bit more playful because this person is going to be poking fun at you or they're going to tease you or they're going to say a lot of things that are a little bit like that will catch you off guard and then you have to rely on your wit to kind of respond to them. So it's a situation where it can work out. It's just going to force you to toughen up a little bit, okay? And then I have this situation where I feel this is you rather than another person. So where you are excitedly going after a person. So the Knight of Wands is um, somebody that's, you know, very passionate. So you have somebody in your midst who's culturally different from you. Um, you're very sexually attracted to another person, okay? And they're, they're culturally very different from you, very different from you. So I see somebody with like, you know, blonde hair, uh, lighter eyes, lighter skin. And then I see another person, dark hair, darker skin. So you could be the light hair person or you could be the dark hair person. But I definitely see things here that are, you know, culturally different or ethnically different or just the way that you look. You're very, very different from each other. This is a little bit of a warning uh, to be very careful about, you know, who it is that you're going after. Because I feel with the Nine of Pentacles, in the reverse, this is somebody that is not able to take care of themselves. Could be another Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Or they could be, uh, you know, uh, a fire sign as well, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. But I feel like it could be another... I feel very strongly it's another earth sign. They're a little bit frivolous. Um, I, I want to say as well, like, um, not a, it's not a bad person, but it's somebody that is distracted with other relationships or other people. I also see this as somebody who's not able to take care of themselves. They're not very independent. They're a little bit emotionally needy, okay? And you're the way that they interact with you, they might seem like they're very needy. And I feel like that kind of um, knocked down your walls a little bit where you feel like, oh, this person really likes me. They're vulnerable around me. I want to take care of them. So it's sort of like, you know, coming in like that knight in shining armor coming in to rescue a damsel in distress. But this is not a damsel. This is a person that is feeding into it in a purposeful manner like they're they're feeding your ego they want to be taken care of they're not very independent they don't know how to take care of themselves they want somebody to step in and and dote on them and adore them and i feel like they're in another relationship they're like distracted with other things so you want to be a little bit careful about that and so what i feel all four of these cards in in tandem be careful to whom you are giving your love and affection, okay? Make sure whatever that pentacles you have in the palms of your hand, it stands for your values. It stands for, you know, the things that you want out of a relationship, things that we don't really compromise on. If somebody is not meeting you there, and if somebody is like, using you as a last resort or taking advantage of the situation if they can't you know hang out with you openly in the daytime if they can't openly tell you you're my girlfriend or you're my boyfriend it's because they're not valuing the relationship so you need to be very careful with whom you are going after and with whom you are giving your love and your affection, okay? Because I, I see some warnings here where you need to really take care of yourself first and don't compromise your values for another person. So Virgos, I'm going to leave it at that. I do wish you all the best, okay?